Hello and welcome to my channel. This time I want to show you my colored pencil drawing of a lioness resting on a tree. This one is going to be a bit more detailed and complex. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe and give me a like if you want to. And for longer videos and more content, check out my Patreon. We're going to start uh, by working on the background a little bit and while I'm doing that I'm going to say a few words about the materials and the composition. The reference is going to be in the uh, description if you want to check it out. And uh, I'm mostly going to be drawing with Faber-Castell Polychromos palette pencils and the surface I'm going to be working on is a 1000 grit sandpaper. Now I already had a sketch in place done with a graphite pencil but I'm going to be adding details as I go along. The first thing that I need to do is this upper part of the background which is going to be mostly darker with a touch of green here and there. Uh, so I mostly used a black colored pencil in that top part of the scene but now I'm going to mix in a bit of a green pencil <coughs> like a permanent olive green and then I'm going to work on top of that with a little bit more black. Now, another trick that I'm using is, in addition to the Faber-Castell Polychromos black colored pencil, I'm also using the Kohinoor black pencil, which is a bit darker and a bit easier to blend. Now, on this surface, I can blend with brushes or even with my fingers when it comes to these larger areas. And it blends pretty well because the textured surface, the sanded surface, grinds on the pencils uh, leaving a little bit more residue that you can move around so it's easier to blend and to layer you could say that on regular paper you can't really blend colored pencils you can just try to layer them to create an illusion like they've been blended but on this surface on sanded surfaces they do actually blend because you mix in that uh, residue that pigment now, um, the lioness is resting on this tree branch or log, whatever it is. I can't really make out from the reference. So, there's going to be a very interesting texture here, but the top part, the top edge of that uh, tree needs to be lighter because it's facing the light source, it's catching the light from above. So that very edge is going to be the lightest and it also uh, provides a very nice contrast with that darker background. The same is going to be the case with the lioness which is going to have some lighter parts of the body which will stand out nicely against that darker background like for example the top of the ears and the top of the head. Now for these uh, cracks in the wood for the texture of the wood I'm going to be using mostly a black colored pencil and I'm going to combine that with a couple of different grays. And uh, sometimes some of these marks are more or less random. Sometimes I just drag my pencil allowing it to create random marks and random textures and sometimes I take a glance at the reference and try to imitate some of the shapes that I see there. But I don't really feel like I need to stick to the reference photo that much as long as I can convey the general shape and the general I idea I think it's going to look good but I don't have to worry about every single detail and every single bump and crack. What we want to draw is something that looks like the tree bark or the surface of a gnarly old tree. And of course as long as I use a couple of different greys and a black pencil to get that nice range of value it should look three-dimensional and realistic enough. I'm starting to work on the lioness on my main subject and for the base color I'm going to be using this uh, brown ochre. That's what it's called in the Faber-Cassell range. And I'm going to be laying that, that down even in those areas which are supposed to be lighter. But 
the thing is that I'm going to be layering lighter or darker pencils on top of them as needed. So I'm putting in tiny marks of darker colored pencil, darker brown. This is a burnt umber. And uh, around the edges and at the top I'm going to use a very light colored pencil which is an ivory colored pencil. Ivory is very close to white, it's kind of like a yellowish white. And I use another very light pencil on the tree there. That was the light warm gray. So I have a couple of different grays But I think this ivory is even is even lighter, and it's kind of yellowish. Now, if you were to use it on its own, it would appear maybe a little bit too light uh, for the for for the lioness's fur. But the thing is that when you layer it on top of these darker ochre colors, it feels just right. The thing is that. On this surface you can layer, you can put multiple layers and you can work from light to dark and from dark to light. Uh, but depending on how you apply your pencil you can also um, control how much the layer underneath will influence uh, the colors that you're putting on top. So you can create cleaner, uh, more opaque marks or you can uh, make them a little bit more transparent you can sort of just graze the surface of the paper uh, slightly modifying the color now moving on to the eye on the left and first I'm going to draw some of these darker details like the skin around the eye and the pupil which is one of the darkest details on my drawing and then I'm going to use this same ochre to draw the iris. But I'm gonna, not going to leave it like that because th there is a yellowish component there but I feel like I see a little bit of green in there as well so I put a little bit of that permanent olive green which I also use for the background, a touch of brown and a little bit of black colored pencil as well very lightly just under the upper eyelid to show that, it, that there is a little bit of shadow there because uh, the, up, the upper eyelid and the eyebrow ridge is casting a bit of shadow onto the eye. And there's a tiny catch light here in the eye, where the eye is reflecting a little bit of light. It's not super bright, but it's certainly a lot lighter than the rest of the eye. So with these things, I try to accomplish a look of the eye that, so that it looks like a round object and also a smooth reflective object. Anyway, moving on to this area above the top of the head, cleaning up that edge a little bit by adding a little bit of darker value first and then going back in with that base color I used initially which was my band or rather brown ochre. Um, I also have a burnt ochre and they are very similar uh, they're so similar that it's very difficult to tell the difference but I think that the burnt ochre has a bit more of a reddish component in it the brown ochre is a little bit more has a bit more of a greenish component maybe a little bit more of a yellowish component in it and I thought that it would work a little bit better with what I was with what I was trying to accomplish here. But the thing is that all of these colors are also influenced by the background color of my paper, which is a slightly darker gray color. Um, and I also need to take that into account. So, like I said, all of the colors will be influenced by the background color of my paper and uh, eventually I may modify the colors a little bit more by adding some uh, warmer tones or more saturated, more lively tones and hues if I feel like 
and uh, the colors are a little bit too dull which often happens on this surface because with uh, with this uh, fine sandpaper I usually have a very limited choice of colors this is a this is a regular sandpaper that you can buy in a hardware store this is not an artist quality paper but it does work just as well now here on the nose there are some pinkish details so for that I use the combination of grey and a little bit of cinnamon for those pinkish details and then I went back in with a black colored pencil to add those uh, spots and details like that there's also a touch of blue that I added around the nose and maybe even a little bit on that uh, tree bark so there are some interesting colors here and there I said that I'm not going to stick to the reference photo 100% but if I see some, something interesting like an interesting hue or an interesting detail I will try to replicate that in my drawing now I'm drawing the paw here, one of the paws and again this part of the paw is both lighter in terms of the uh, the fur that it's that's covering it but also it's lighter because it's facing the light source so it's more exposed that top part is more exposed to the light source so it's going to be uh, even lighter while the part at the bottom is going to appear a little bit darker a little bit more subdued now there are uh, a couple of different ways to establish that contrast one is to simply use less of that brighter color and the other is to go over that later with a darker color. I'm also adding a touch of white here at the top because I feel like some of these lighter colors are both lighter and cooler in some areas and that's why I added a touch of white on top of the ivory colored pencil which is already fairly bright. Uh, now I'm working on the on the tree bark here and uh, I'm gonna have to add a lot more details and the the details on the on this tree bark uh, that was one of the main reasons um, why I picked this reference and in case you're wondering about the origin of the reference photo most of these uh, are from Excels, Pixabay, Unsplash, and some others. I think this one was from Pixabay. Anyway, uh, so uh, my approach here will be to draw at least some of these larger, deeper cracks in the tree bark and then add smaller and smaller lines and details as I go along. And here I also did a bit more of the background mostly with a black colored pencil and then blending blending mostly with a brush and most of the time on this surface I like to use a soft synthetic brush but as you can see I did a little bit of work with my fingers as well because your finger is a great blending tool when you can use it and on this surface you can use it but you have to be careful because sandpaper obviously can be a little bit rough on your skin. Anyway, I'm putting down the base color that I'm going to draw these lighter details on top of and again I used a bit of that burnt uh, or rather brown ochre but I also added a touch of cinnamon to introduce some more of those pinkish tones and now I'm working on the lighter details uh, the lighter patches of fur uh, on the face like for example around the eyes and the eyebrow area but also on the top of the head where the fur is uh, a little bit lighter both in color but also in terms of value because it's facing up towards the light source so that's one of the things that you always have to keep in mind uh, is that it's not just the color it's also uh, how it relates or how it interacts with the with the light source and um, it's easy to get caught up into uh, drawing fur but you must never forget about the larger relationships between the lighter areas and the shadow areas I'm moving on to the other eye 
and uh, going back to the first one just adding some of these really dark details uh, like the tear duct area and the skin around the eye and that shadow just uh, below the upper eyelid <clears throat> and of course the pupil. So I like to put in those darker bits first and then I can uh, then I find it easier to work on the other details and for the really dark details in addition to the paper castell black colored pencil as I've already mentioned I also use the Kohinoor silky black pencil which is probably a little bit darker as well uh, just going back and forth between lighter and darker pencils here as you can see on the left side of the face as I'm defining both the topography of the face as well as the appearance and the colors of that fur. The fur here above the nose area is really really short so I'm going to have to find a way to imitate that texture and here on the sides uh, on the upper jaw we have these uh, whiskers and uh, just that area around uh, under the eye around the cheekbone area is also a little bit darker mostly because of the shadow but also because the fur I feel like there is also a little bit darker and duller in color and of course here on the top of the head it's quite a bit lighter. I want these lighter hairs to stand out really nicely against the um, darker background. So it's important to have not just a sufficient amount of contrast but to have a clean contrast or clean edge to value between the lighter surface that is the top of the lioness's head and the darker background which is, uh, which is mostly black. And I have to imitate the appearance of really, really short hair, because a really short fur, because um, the fur on the lioness's head is fairly short. Also, another thing that you'll see is that the the amount of detail that my camera is able to show kind of varies a little bit because I'm not really using high quality equipment here, but sometimes it gets a little bit out of focus so sometimes you can see a little bit more of the details sometimes a little bit less I think now it's working pretty well so you can see the tiny marks that I'm making because with the fur it's important to imitate the appearance of the fur by paying attention to the length of the fur and the direction in which it grows so you have to match the length of the fur with the length of your strokes and the direction of the fur with the direction or the angle of your strokes so as long as you do those two things you will end up with a very nice looking texture of the fur but of course you must never forget that the overall larger relationships between areas of light and shadow are far more important than these tiny details and textures another trick that I'm using uh, that you can't really see at the moment, but it, I drag a pencil like this. I just hold it sideways and I allow it to shade with the broader side. And what that does, it, uh, it creates a, a little bit of random texture that I couldn't be able to produce if I were just um, trying to make really, really tiny marks, or it, maybe it would take a very long time for me to do that. So this is... Uh, technique that I use to imitate the appearance of really really short fur but in order for it to work you need to have a darker layer underneath and you can always go back and add a few of those short marks on top of that um, just as sort of suggestions to the viewer so that they can see uh, how the hair grows but uh, most of it you can just imitate by dragging the pencil and it will look like a really short fur. Now I'm going to do a little bit of work on this tree bark here where I'm going to draw some lighter details. So I first put in some of these uh, some of these darker shadow areas 
and now I'm sort of working in between them now that I have those larger darker cracks in place I'm working in between them but um, even though it's easier and simpler for me now to, to work with just a couple of uh, greys or maybe just with a combination of grey and black colored pencil I must uh, remember to shade some parts of that tree so that it's a little bit darker so that the, those top edges or top parts of it which are facing up towards the light source end up being much lighter because that way it will look more three-dimensional and ultimately more realistic also this goatee um, the the lioness has the, this uh, hair light hair that go grows on the chin and the lower jaw area I first needed to do the shadow area under it to shade that tree that, that basically she is resting uh, its head on I, I first needed to do that so that I could pull these lighter strokes afterwards and another thing that you can see here and you can see that very clearly is how easy it is for me to pull these lighter strokes on top of the really dark areas this is of course something that you uh, would never be able to do on regular paper because on regular paper you would either have to make indentations to reserve the white space or you would have to you know maybe try with erasing in which case maybe it wouldn't look that good or some of these shapes or marks wouldn't be quite as clean but here on this surface there are no such limitations because you can always easily add lighter details on top of the dark ones as long as the number of layers is reasonable because it obviously if you put in too many layers it's going to start to get saturated and it will just refuse to take new layers and it will start muddying the colors or you will start burnishing the surface of the paper but most of the time it works pretty well and you're able to put in a few layers which means a lot because in a lot of these cases working from dark to light just feels a lot more natural and when you have these tiny hairs like whiskers like the hair on the chin area it just needs to stand out against the darker background and it's it feels more natural and it feels a lot easier to just draw a lighter line on top of the uh, darker area uh, but that's, that darker area is extremely important just like these cracks are extremely important because uh, that range of value that contrast between the lighter and darker details is, is what will help you achieve a 3D, three dimensional look so we need to feel like the lioness's head is really on top of that uh, wood. We need to feel like uh, the tree bark is a three-dimensional surface that has some raised gnarly bits and some cracks which are deeper inside, which are basically shadow areas which aren't catching my, much light or aren't exposed to much light. So now I'm just going in and adding some tiny marks here and there. These are interrupted marks because I want to introduce even more randomness in the, into the bark of this tree. And I'm drawing a few more larger cracks at the bottom. And maybe a few more knots and gnarly bits in that old tree. Overall, I think I like the way it's turning out, even though uh, a number of uh, phases here in this drawing process, a number of things are quite time consuming. Working on the texture of this tree is obviously very time consuming and complex, and of course, working on the fur of the lioness is uh, very complex and time consuming because. When I see shorter fur, I need to make sure that, I, that I'm trying to represent that with shorter marks, and you need to make a lot of those shorter marks. So in a way, it's easier to draw longer fur than it is to draw such short fur. I'm moving on to the other ear, and the first thing I'm going to do is clean up the edge with a darker pencil then I'm adding some pinkish details to modify the base color slightly and then I'm adding the upper edge using the ivory colored pencil which proved to be very useful for drawing the lighter details of the 
of, of this uh, lioness's fur. Now the interesting thing about subjects like these is that as fascinating and as uh, detailed uh, as they look, the truth is that a good part of the drawing process is somewhat monotonous. That goes for all furry animals because you always have to draw these details. Um, I mean there are ways of simplifying it but not really when you're doing a larger more detailed drawing like this one. So maybe if it were a smaller piece where if I were able to focus on other things like the uh, landscape and the surrounding maybe then but here it's more or less a portrait of a sleepy lioness and I really have to put in a lot of these details. So I'm putting in these uh, longer, softer, fluffier hairs on the inner side of the ear. And you can see how nicely they stand out against the darker layers. That's uh, because it's so easy for me to add these really clean marks with clean edges on this surface. I'm also occasionally going back in with darker pencils to deepen the shadow, the, the shadows in between those, let's say, clumps of uh, But I mostly want to get the distribution of lighter and darker patches of uh, to make sure that they're in the in their proper place. And the same goes for all other details, like these tiny darker spots where the whiskers are growing out of. And uh, I think the head itself is going to be the most complex part and the things are going to get just a little bit faster and easier once I move on to the body. Uh, I will still have to draw a lot of that hair, but maybe I will it'll be easier for me to simplify things a little bit because I expect pe pe people to focus on the head and the eyes more than on the rest of the body so maybe I can simplify that a little bit. I'm just doing a little bit more work on the right side of the face, on the right side of the head now, adding the same details that I did on the opposite side and using the same approach when it comes to layering lighter and darker details. This was a um, fairly lengthy drawing process for me because most of, the, most of the drawings I do are both smaller in size but also a little bit shorter in terms of the, the amount of time uh, they take. And the size of this paper is, by the way, I forgot to mention that it's uh, 9 times 11 inches or so, maybe even a little bit larger than that, but it's still not a very large piece. But because there are so many details, obviously it took a little bit more time. It took me about three hours or so. I'm not really sure. Uh, but I'm definitely going to need to make a couple of longer videos for the Patreon, because the Patreon is, a, is the place where I usually put those uh, full-length narrated videos, so if that's the sort of stuff that you want to see, that's uh, that's the place to go. There's a lot of lighter hair here on the side of the head, but I'm kind of building it up gradually, starting from that base uh, color, that ochre, and then gradually making it lighter and light, uh, lighter and lighter by making more and more of these marks. And you can see how I'm allowing them to overlap a little bit, uh, so that the fur looks a little bit more natural and a bit more random because I don't want to draw just a bunch of uh, parallel lines because that will look too artificial and too uniform so you want to always have a little bit more randomness and now I'm finally moving on to the body not that I'm completely finished uh, with the head because I'm going to be revisiting it and revising some of the details and adding some of the details like those whiskers but I'm mostly going to focus on the body now and the interesting thing here are some of these um, larger folds in the fur and the skin 
I'm also adding a touch of this cadmium orange here and there because I felt like I needed a little bit more of that orangey and reddish component. I felt like some of the colors were a little bit too dull. Not necessarily because of the colors I picked, but because of the influence of that duller color uh, of the paper, the background color of my paper, which is still coming through a little bit and making my overall, the overall appearance of my drawing a little bit duller. So I'm just uh, finishing some of the details on this tree bark here and it's starting to look better and better and more and more detailed. Just uh, working in between those larger cracks, adding some uh, lighter details so that they would stand out a little bit more and look a bit more three-dimensional. And now I'm working on the shadow areas on these folds in the skin, mostly around the neck and the uh, shoulder area and I first drew those uh, with a black colored pencil. Now the great thing about this surface is you can use a black colored pencil with impunity because um, you can always modify it with other pencil with other colors so all you do with a black colored pencil you get uh, an area of darker value and they, then later I can just uh, modify its hue a little bit by making it a bit more reddish or maybe a bit more brownish uh, whatever I want to achieve I just finished the rest of the background here at the top and to the right and I'm also going to add a few touches of other colors as well now I'm uh, mostly doing the work on the fur here on the top of the back which again is going to be a little bit lighter because it's facing up so it's always important to stay aware of the direction of the light or the, the, the origin of the light source and you can see that I did a bit more work on the on the fur here around the shoulder area actually my camera died at one point that's why I lost a little bit of the footage but it wasn't too much I still did capture most of the drawing process like I said here on YouTube I even though this is a slightly longer video it's around 40 minutes um, a lot of it is compressed, a lot of it is in time-lapse, time some parts of it are in real time as you can see but on Patreon you can observe these things, um, you can observe the drawing process at pretty much the, the same pace that it was done in real, in real time but as you can see there's not much to it I'm just trying to draw these short marks to imitate the appearance of short fur the fur here is still very short but it feels like it's a little bit longer in, than on some parts of the head like for example around the nose and the um, area between the eyes it's really really short and another thing that I'm doing to imitate the appearance of that short fur is just occasionally dragging my pencil allowing it to produce that texture I used a similar technique on some parts of the head as well but then I go back and I add some more of those uh, more deliberate short marks just so that I would kind of explain to the viewer what the exact shape, length and the direction of the fur is well, these are, these are all just uh, tiny tricks that you pick up along the way as you do portraits of wildlife because I've already done a number of drawings of lions and um, I believe this is the first color pencil drawing of a lioness I've ever done although I've done color pencil drawings of lions and other members of the big cat family and they always make great subjects I think now I'm finishing the work on this leg here in the foreground and uh, sort of putting down the finishing touches and then all I have left to do is this 
um, belly area to the right and again I'm gonna put in this uh, this brown ochre as my base color and take it from there so like I said this is uh, one of the longer videos I post here on YouTube because the thing is when the when the drying process is longer my short video my uh, my YouTube video also ends up being a little bit longer because it's difficult for me to compress everything and I don't want it all to be in time lapse but like I said the full length footage is going to be over three hours or around three hours maybe there's a little bit of shadow here probably um, indicating where the rib cage is and then a little bit of shadow between the lioness's body and that log or tree that she is resting on so it's very important to indicate where those darker and deeper shadow areas are is because um, that allows us to show in a very clear way to the viewer where one object ends and the other one begins or in this case where the main subject ends and the uh, the surrounding of the environment begins now we have some slightly longer hair here which is why I'm making longer marks and then again, again we have some really short marks as we move uh, closer to, to the top of the back area so I'm trying to stay aware of that and to stay consistent with that we also have some slightly different colors here I introduced a little bit more of the pinkish tones on the side of the body like that um, light beige red or uh, cinnamon but now I'm just back to refining some of the lighter details on both the head and the body because I felt like maybe I needed to increase the range of value by making some parts even lighter so these are just the finishing touches where I kind of zoom out of the reference photo and I usually have my reference photo on an iPad that I'm looking at and I kind of most of the time it's kind of zoomed in a little bit but eventually I sort of zoom out and I try to focus on the larger on the big picture I put my signature in the lower left corner and I'm just gonna finish these corners where the drawing was secured with a tape and after that I think the drawing will be pretty much done. I'm just adding a little bit more shadow here and increasing the contrast uh, between the, the body and that shadow area on the log. I'm also going to make some parts of this log a little bit darker. And as a final touch I'm going over some areas with some more of that cadmium orange because I wanted to make some parts of the body a little bit more orangey I suppose with a little bit more saturation so that they are not too dull and then just modifying the appearance of this eyebrow area a little bit and adding a few of these smaller shadow details so I think the drawing is almost done. Once again, I'm just going to make the, the, the top part of the back here and the shoulder area a little bit lighter, just a little bit lighter. So once again, I would like to remind you to give me a like and subscribe if you want to. Don't forget to comment, let me know what you think. And don't forget to check out my other videos, there are plenty of them. And of course, as usual, for much more content and longer full narrated videos, check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.